Welcome to the deep dive. So if you've been watching any of the long range weather models, you know something big is on the way for late December. Oh yeah. We're talking a seriously colder and snowier pattern from say December 20th into the new year, especially for the Northern and Eastern US and into Canada. Right. And you are absolutely right to be preparing for that cold. But the reason why it's happening <laughs> well, the common wisdom on this is completely upside down. It really is. Okay, okay so let's unpack that. Mm -hmm. When people hear Arctic blast, they usually think the polar vortex must be incredibly strong, you know, pushing all that air south. That's what I would have thought. But that's not it at all. A strong, scable polar vortex actually keeps the cold air locked up tight near the pole. What we're seeing is the total opposite. A weakened... Uh, fractured polar vortex a fractured vortex so that's counterintuitive uh, what could be powerful enough to actually break the polar vortex well this is where the story gets really surprising the whole thing was kicked off by an extremely rare very early season event a sudden stratospheric warming that essentially shattered the pv structure way back on november 28th november 28th that feels really early it is i mean we're talking about maybe one of only three times this has ever been recorded in november going all the way back to 1958. I... just it's not supposed to happen then okay hold on what exactly is a sudden stratospheric warming is that happening way up high where we don't feel it yet that's a great question yes exactly the stratosphere is miles above us far above the weather we experience day to day and ssw is when the temperature up there maybe 20 miles high suddenly spikes. It's like a hammer blow from above that shatters the atmospheric wall, the PV that contains all that Arctic air. But you don't feel that hammer blow right away. No, not at all. There's a cascade effect. We know there's a predictable lag, usually about one to three weeks, for that signal way up in the stratosphere to work its way down and really start influencing our surface weather. And if you do the math from November 28th, that puts the peak cold response right over Christmas week. Right over Christmas week. Roughly December 20th through the 28th. The timing is just perfect for maximum impact. So how does that event up there connect to our weather down here? Well, the SSW forces a really crucial atmospheric domino to fall. It pushes the Arctic Oscillation, or AO, into a deep negative phase. The AO. The AO. You can think of the AO as sort of a strong, smooth riverbank that keeps the jet stream flowing fast and straight. When it goes negative, that riverbank just crumbles. And when the bank crumbles, the river goes everywhere, the jet stream gets all wavy. Exactly. You get this big wavy north-south pattern. We call it meridional flow. And that allows Arctic air to just pour south deep into the eastern two-thirds of the country. This is what's setting up that huge temperature split we're seeing in the forecast. Yeah, let's talk about that split. The outlook shows a core of below normal temperatures really favored for the northern plains, the western Great Lakes. But the south stays warm. Why? Because of that amplified wavy flow. While the north gets the plunge of Arctic air, the southern two-thirds of the U.S., especially the Gulf Coast and Florida, gets the other side of the wave, which pulls up much warmer air. So you yeah. get above normal warmth there. In the background, La Nina state just makes that worse. It amplifies it. Yeah, yeah. La Nina naturally favors that kind of cold north, warm south pattern to begin with. So you take that frigid, below normal air in the north, and then you look at the precipitation forecast, which is above normal for the Great Lakes in northeast. That sounds like a recipe for some major winter storms. It's the perfect recipe. That sharp temperature contrast, you know, the difference between maybe five degrees in Chicago and 70 in Atlanta, that's pure atmospheric fuel. It creates intense instability, which is what you need for the rapid development of um, major storms. We're talking widespread blizzards in the Midwest, disruptive nor'easters on the coast. All of that is on the table and right during the peak of the holiday rush. Okay, so let's put it all together for you. This combination, a rare early SSW leading to a negative AO, all amplified by La Nina, it creates very high confidence for some severe travel disruptions. Absolutely. Ground transport, aviation, the major freight corridors in the north and east are going to be right in the crosshairs during the busiest logistical week of the year. And here's the final thought. Strategic planners are already modeling this out. They are. And because this SSW happened so early, there's a real chance this pattern could lock in place and persist well beyond the new year. So you should really consider the scenario where this isn't just a Christmas weather story. This severe winter pattern could extend its influence deep into January and maybe even February of 2026. It could define the whole season. 